name is Daniel Erickson, and I'm the lead writer on Star Wars The Old Republic. And today we are here at the EA Showcase, and people got to play the bounty hunter on Hutta, run around, do some missions, We're really focusing on combat today, and getting people to actually see what the full combat builds look like. We also announced our first playable race, which is the Ratataki, uh, so that we've seen like in the Clone Wars uh, with Asaji Ventress. Uh, so cool people, white skin, cool tattoos. One of the things that we know contextually from the movies is when you don't want to take down a guy with a lightsaber, you call a bounty hunter. So the bounty hunter is uh, primarily our gadgeteer class. He is going to be able to stand up against the Jedi because he's got the cool armor. He's got um, a really interesting power system, which is actually that he gets to use all the different things that are hooked into his armor, and they all heat up. So uh, what you have to actually do is vent the heat to try to get the ability to do more pieces. So he has got missiles, he has got a flamethrower, he has got a grappling hook where he can pull people into him, he can use his rocket pack to then knock people back away from him, he can fly up and get out of range and shoot missiles down at people. Um, everything is really about controlling the battlefield around him. Uh, he is not a cover class, so what you actually saw today is that other people would get into cover, and then you can use your missiles to knock them out of cover, or of course you can just run around and flank them and shoot them, because our game is not the normal static, I have to stand in one place and do my stuff. I can run and gun through the whole thing. No threats found. The bridge is now secure. Romance has always been a big part of Bioware games, um, because companion characters are a big part of Bioware games. And not only do we have companion characters for this, but just like we have a class story that is different and totally unique content for every class, all of the companion characters are totally unique for every class. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to have Vader pick up Chewbacca and go adventuring. So we really had to go and give everybody their own people. So you've got the same thing you would expect normally in a Bioware game, and you've got characters that you can romance, characters that you might end up killing, characters that can turn on you, that you can turn on, that you can exploit, the whole, the whole realm of RPG fun. Uh, the light side, dark side system works very much like it did in Nice Field Republic. You make decisions, this goes into your light side, dark side piece. Uh, it's an interesting one, obviously, in the MMO space because there is no save button. So you're going to make this decision and this is going to impact your character and stay with it. Um, how the light side, dark side interacts with your combat skills and your abilities specifically is something that we have not talked about yet as we're still ironing out all of the advancement stuff. But now we have eight totally different paths with completely unique content. So yeah, you could, you could, if you wanted to, play the Sith Warrior twice and see what happens to the light side or a dark side. Or you could also go to the Jedi Knight, who, let's be clear, if you play the Sith Warrior from level one all the way through, and then you go and play the Jedi Knight from level one all the way through, you won't see a single piece of repeated content. It is a completely different game with completely different quests and NPCs all the way through. We are out of pre-production. We are in production. All the main systems are in. The eight classes are in. Every day you come in and there's a brand new piece online. So new aliens are in, a new world comes in. So it's, it's the exact opposite of the parts where it seems like nothing's moving because, you know, it's a lot of heavy systems programming, a lot of getting the tools together, a lot of building the structure. And then, yeah, you get the super fun where you're just racing. One of the great things about working on a product like this is that Lucas has always given their authors a lot of freedom to expand the universe. So we have, uh, obviously, all of LucasArts at our disposal. Uh, we have a thing called the Holocron, which is actually the compendium of everything. So you can go in there and reference every planet, every character, everybody who's been mentioned once in some side thing. Uh, and what we really try to do is we try to extend into that. So even when we're doing what is a brand new world for the Old Republic, so uh, we go in there and like we just recently announced Voss, which is something nobody's ever seen, but we still don't take nothing usually. What we did is we went into the Holocron, we found a world that was in the right sort of area uh, and didn't have much described about it. And we said, okay, let's fill that out, right? As opposed to adding to the noise, let's see if we can't take some of these disparate parts of the extended universe and connect them and actually make the canon better, deeper, and more consistent. Star Wars The Old Republic is coming out spring of 2011 and hope to see you all online real soon.